Every year, everyone who's even remotely connected to content production comes to one place. The mecca of all things video and audio, ladies and gentlemen, NAB 2014, Las Vegas. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. I'm Father Robert Ballas here, the digital Jesuit with Twit TV at NAB twenty fourteen. Now, if you are in production, you've probably heard about DJI. They're the ones who make these wonderful, wonderful drones. In fact, we saw one of the videos created with a DJI drone not too long ago on our channel. Corridor Digital showed their video of what Superman would look like if he were wearing a GoPro. And of course, that GoPro was mounted on the carriage of a DJI drone. This is their second generation drone. Now there are a few things that they've changed. The first thing is they've dropped the price. This is now $12.99, which is just $100 more than the first generation drone they showed off at CES. Also, they've increased the loiter time to 25 minutes. That means that once you get this up in the air, well, you've got a lot more time to get your shot. A few things that they've, uh, they've done to the electronics, they've included a Wi-Fi range extender, which basically doubles the range to about 700 meters. So you can get this, this drone far, far away from you, get those really high shots or those far shots if that's what you're looking for. Now, it's not just the platform that they've changed. They've also improved the camera. Underneath the carriage of this drone is a 14 megapixel fully gyro stabilized camera. That means that you can use your phone mounted on the top of this controller to tilt back and forth to control the direction of the camera in mid flight. Also, they've moved the electronics off of the camera itself into the body of the drone, which means that the weight of the camera is not so much that it can't be finely controlled by the motor servos. Now, we've got plenty of footage of this drone in flight from Showstoppers the other day and in fact we've got some footage from here in the booth just showing the fine control that they can have of positioning altitude, longitude, latitude, whatever. Now the last feature I absolutely think is, is going to be essential, it's going to become the norm for these types of devices is the GPS home feature. When you get this into an area where it can receive a GPS signal it knows it's home. Which means that if you lose connectivity, if your controller dies, if, if somehow the Wi-Fi cuts out, the drone won't plummet and crash or fly out into the ocean. It will actually come back to the position it knows at home. It's a nice thing to do if you want to save your investment. Now, we're going to see more and more of this at NAB 2014, but uh, if you want the gold standard, it's all DJI. If you're a content creator, you probably love those buttery smooth shots. You know the ones I'm talking about, that perfect zoom, that perfect pan or tilt. The problem is, unless you have a huge budget, you can't afford the platforms, the Steadicam rigs, and the operators that you need to get those shots. That was until now. We're here at DJI, and I'm sitting next to Paul, who, uh, well, Paul, you're holding the Ronin? What is this? Yeah, this is our uh, all-new three-axis uh, camera stabilization system. Uh, we've taken our Zemuse technology uh, for camera stabilization and we've implemented it into a handheld system. Um, it's a, uh, we introduced it at NAB 2014 and um, it's, a, it's a system that's uh, basically com completely clean. It's, a, it's not that DIY kind of look. Um, it's a professional system and uh, it has these kind of modes like uh, you have this smooth track mode where it's going to translate your movement, uh, your pan, you have your uh, pitch. Um, we also have, you know, we have besides this uh, standard underslung uh, control mode, we have another mode where you can bring it down like this, <coughs> and then this will allow you to get closer to your body. Like uh, you don't have these handles in the way as you walk through doorways. And then um, we also have here this right side up mode. Let's turn this around. So. Most times if you're underslung, you're always shooting at your chest or, or, or stomach level. You do this, and you suddenly are at eye level. Um, all of this is all automatically controlled through our uh, 
complex algorithms and 32-bit uh, processors. It's more consumer friendly, meaning you know price comes down. Um, now, one of the things that I, I've noticed with some of the other gimbal systems is they take a lot of startup. You got to lock them in properly. You have to adjust the servo motors. You got to make sure your load is balanced. When when I turned this on earlier, it did all that for me. It did a self check and it knew where the where the weight was, where the balance was, and then it adjusted itself so that this handle was always pointing forward. Yeah, that's true. Um, we've made everything toolless so that uh, center of gravity adjustments. Uh, are all toolless, it's, it's really fast. And then besides just being toolless, once you get the mechanical part of it set up, uh, we've implemented an app, a button into the app, which will allow you to press a button and then automatically tune all the motors for you. So between, say, like a camera change or a lens change, you're no longer spending 30 minutes, you're spending five minutes to do the job. The dead band uh, can be adjusted uh, based off the app. It's all adjusted through the Bluetooth app. And then, um, you can also control the speed at which you, your, your movement translates. We call that smooth track. Um, so as you pan, you'll see that it smoothly moves over instead of a sudden jerk, which will, tra which will translate to a very jerky video. We know that the system is going to run for four hours on a charge. But, uh, and I know this is a prototype, so you can't tell me things like how much it weighs. Well, I know it supports, was it 15 or 16 pounds? 16 pounds. Okay. So 16 pounds of support. What's the price availability? Because I know there's a lot of filmmakers out there who are going to want this as soon as possible. Where will they be able to get it? When will they be able to get it? How much do you think it's going to cost? Uh, we're not announcing the official MSRP, but uh, we're going to come in at under $5,000. Uh, and uh, it will be released uh, quarter two, which we're in uh, sometime this quarter. Paul, thank you so very much. And beautiful design. Thank you for giving us the Ronin. Father Robert Ballas here. Let's move on. If you've been shooting with prosumer equipment, you know that one of the biggest drawbacks is that, well, your monitor just doesn't cut it. That little teeny tiny screen that may come with your camera, no, how, no matter how expensive it may be, just doesn't give you the size, the accuracy, the color reproduction that you demand. That's why we're here at Marshall to take a look at some of their camera top monitors. Devin, thank you very much for talking to us. What do we have in front of us? We're looking at the ORCID 901 Broadcast Series Camera Top Monitors. These are going to be our most advanced feature-rich monitors. They're going to have waveform, vector scope, audio bars, all with programmable features on them. You're going to get peaking filters, false color filters. These give you the tools that you need to do the best shooting you can. So pretty much these are the top of the line. How much do they run and where are they available? These monitors, depending upon what version you get, are going to run in the three dollars to $4,000 range. Um, these are available through any of our integrators throughout the country. Um, you can uh, certainly get, go to lcdracks.com uh, to view the full specs on these. Fantastic. Now, these are great, and these are our top of the line, but I understand that you've got some, well, lower, I don't say lower end, but lower cost units for the prosumer who just wants something to shoot with. Absolutely. So what you're going to see here is our VLCD 70MD. This is our most popular monitor that we sell in the 7-inch series. This isn't going to have all the scopes on it, but it does have the waveform on it. You're going to get the audio bars, and you're going to get a fantastic picture with uh, false color as well as peaking on it. Um, what we've done this year uh, to improve upon uh, this monitor is over here. This is now a full resolution 1920 by 1080 panel. There is no scaling in this, so you're going to get the best picture possible with this. Um, the flexibility of this monitor is fantastic. There are different battery mounts that are available from Sony, Panasonic, and Tom Bauer. You also have the flexibility to change the inputs. On the back, you're going to get HDMI inputs natively. Then we have a card-based system where you can input 3G HDSDI. You can do cross-conversion on a monitor such as this so it really is one of our most flexible value priced monitors the VLCD 70 um, has a list cost of 999 while our new uh, high resolution uh, VLCD 71 has a list cost of 1999 you can see all the specifications on these monitors at www.lcdracks.com well, there you have it. If you want to see more, and if you want to see a, a smaller consumer version of this, make sure to stay tuned to our Twit TV coverage. I'm Father Robert Ballister. This is Devin. And if you want to see what you're shooting, put a Marshall on top. 
making waves these last few years has been RED and their RED camera. Now this monster is a 4K demon. It has taken the industry by storm as one of the only really affordable 4K units. Now this is the RED Dragon. This body is going to start at about $35,000, which is a lot, but then again you have to consider what you get. You get interchangeable lenses, you get a body quality that is unlike any other, and new for the show, RED is now adding a broadcast module to their bodies, which allows you to use this as a full 4K broadcast quality streaming device. Now, when we were playing with these early on, we found that uh, it does take a little bit of training. This is not your point and shoot, nor was it designed to be. But as you can see at the RED booth, the buzz is palpable because people realize they are at the cusp of making a new generation of content in 4K. Now, this is not the only thing that they're announcing at this booth. They're, they've talked about how they've been working with uh, a couple of manufacturers to increase their effective projective uh, power to over 5K. They're also talking about their big push into high definition stills along with the motion all in one single unit. Uh, if you want to shoot in high def, you definitely want to check out RED. If you're a fan of Twit TV, you know that we live and die by our TriCaster. It's the beast that controls the brick house. It's the thing that lets us stream all our naughty bits to the internet. I'm standing next to Carter Holland, the CMO of NewTek, who's going to tell us about a new product they have called 3Play. Carter, what is 3Play? So 3Play is an integrated sports production system. And what we've done with 3Play is we've really taken sort of a page out of what we do with TriCaster in terms of looking at everything that goes into a live production in that environment, all the component parts and all the, all the staff that's required to operate those and putting as much of that capability into a turnkey system as possible. So now we're doing that in the world of sports production where most manufacturers look at replay and slow motion and develop a device that's based on sort of linear tape-based workflow. Our approach is similar to what I just described for the whole environment. We're looking at what do you need to do if you want to create a full sports show? And that includes not only instant replay and slow motion, but other things like titling and motion graphics and you know animated transitions, social media publishing. You know, with, with three play you can look at up to eight camera angles all at once, and while you're publishing content to the big screen in the arena or the stadium or the environment, you can also at the same time be publishing different replays to your social media channels just with a push of a button. So lots of this kind of capability, and this opens up new opportunities for our customers with New, new opportunities for revenue, for sponsorship, um, advertising that just wasn't there before, particularly if you were just looking at a replay slow motion system. So it's much more than that. And in new tech tradition, the price points of these are very, very aggressive and democratizing in terms of what technology is already out there. Now let's talk about those price points. I mean, I, I see the, the three-play control panel behind me. It looks like if I know how to run a TriCaster, I'm going to know how to run a three-play. I know that there's heavy integration between the two, but I mean, what am I looking at? Five grand, ten grand? So our our top of the line system is a three-play 4800. This is an eight-camera dual output system. Um, you could actually run eight cameras in. You could run four cameras in and use the other four channels for full media redundancy. This system starts at 39,995 US. Um, and then we have a brand new model, the 3Play 440, which is a, a smaller uh, uh, form factor. It's a 2U rack mountable device. Um, same capabilities as the 4800, just a little bit less I.O. Uh, that starts at 24995 And the best pricing news, perhaps, is our 3Play 425, which is a professional four-channel replay slow motion system now available for under $10,000. And you know what, just like three or four years ago, you're talking well into the six figures for this kind of technology. Carter, that is absolutely amazing. I'm sure we're gonna see it in the Brickhouse at some point in the near future. Thank you so very much for showing off your tech. If you wanna find out more, make sure to go to newtech.com. And remember, you're seeing us through the TriCaster. You've probably wanted some eye-catching designs in your studio or maybe in some promotional items. Well, if you have, there have been a couple of possibilities. You could wrap it in some LEDs, you could make it glowy, you could make it blinky, or you could put a flexible LCD screen around it. Now, these things are flexible LED displays. Now, the nice thing about them is that they come in multiple capabilities. You could get a low definition version for about 3300 per square meter or the high definition version for about 4700 per square meter. 
all of the electronics are built into this weatherized platform. So if you want to expand it, you just daisy chain these units to turn it into something like this. This display is actually one big collection of these high resolution LED panels. And as you can see, you can have them produce any pattern, any color, any logo at any time. Uh, the price on these units are going to come down steadily as, as the volume increases, and I'm sure we're going to see more and more of this type of technology because, well, flexible is in. Here's the situation. You're an amateur content creator and you want those buttery smooth shots that you would get with a rail or some sort of gyro stabilized platform, but you don't have the five or $10,000 you would need to buy one. Well, thankfully, we've got Big Balance. Here at Big Balance, they're giving everyone the ability to have those gyro stabilized shot for a fraction of the cost. Now, what I really like about this is that they've designed products for every type of camera, every type of shooter. Everything from the Gazelle, which will give you your, your camera phone shots, all the way up to the Mustang, which will give you sort of the action camera shots, to the Husky, which will give you these larger single shot cameras, and then ultimately to the Gorilla and the Brown Bear, which will give you your DSLR support. Now, here's the thing you're going to love. Pricing. You may say, oh, it's going to start at $800, it's going to start at $1,000. No, it starts at $220 for the Gazelle, going all the way up to $2,800 for the Brown Bear. So you choose the level of support you need and the amount of cap capabilities you want built into your unit. If you're looking for that smooth shot, look no further than Big Balance. Everybody likes storage. Everyone likes a lot of storage. Everyone likes a lot of really fast storage, which is why we're here at the Lassie booth for NAB 2014 in the South Hall. Now, we're looking at some of their new Thunderbolt 2 enabled devices. These are everything from this nice little portable drive to these large toting desktop drives to this rack mounted monster we're gonna see later on. I'm standing next to Erwan who's gonna show us why these are so important in Lassie's lineage. Erwan, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you for having me here. Now, this we've seen before. This is a one terabyte SSD monster. Tell me, what inspired you to make a device that's this small and this fast and this big? So uh, people, I would say, from this content creation industry always need a lot of storage and they always need a faster storage, especially this year with the 4K uh, video editing coming over. They need some screamingly fast uh, storage and they need it also on stage, uh, on field, I would say, on stage and on field. Um, so this product is really made for these people to be able to edit their content on the go, uh, in a hotel room, in a, uh, a trailer, wherever they shoot the content, they can uh, 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 start working on it right away thanks to this kind of drive. Another good interest also is that these guys are spending hours and hours per day just moving content around, just copying content from one drive to another, from one drive to a workstation. And with this kind of drives, we can copy one terabyte out of it in less than 15 minutes. Uh, I would say with other technologies, it would take you like something like two or three hours. So these guys can end up their day at four or at seven, depending on uh, if they have this storage or another storage. So that's, that's the whole idea behind this kind of portable, super high-speed uh, uh, Thunderbolt 2 storage. Yeah, I'd say that 4K content has really made necessary fast-moving devices like this. Because yeah, if you're trying to move a terabyte of a project file over USB 3, you could be there for two or three hours. We just saw them transfer in 15 minutes from this device to one of these other devices. Now let's talk about this. This is a two-drive spinning yes. array, yes. but also using Thunderbolt 2 plus USB 3. Yes, so the, this kind of product is more tailored at uh, photographers or people uh, creating content through, for example, product like GoPros or such cameras, uh, uh, this kind of product is fast enough to uh, enable them to work on their workflow uh, uh, out of this drive. It's a uh, two bay uh, up to 420 megabytes per second uh, uh, array. Uh, it goes up to 12 terabytes, so a lot of data. And indeed, as you said, it supports Thunderbolt 2 and USB 3 and a hardware rate controller. It means that this is really a cross-platform compatible product. It means you can start working on the data on a Mac and then transfer to a PC and continue to work on it. Now, we talked about the super fast portable storage. We've talked about the super big, yep. still somewhat mobile storage. Yep. Let's now talk about your rack mounted unit and your big five bay desktop unit. So these two products, again, are really for, uh, we say the, the 4K, 
uh, uh, video editing. Uh, they are more or less the same product in a different form factor. We have either a desktop storage, so the 5 big Thunderbolt 2, or a rack mounted storage, which is the uh, 8 big uh, uh, Thunderbolt 2. So these products are capable of more than one gigabytes per second in terms of transfer rate uh, out of, of, of straight one unit. And what we are showing here today at NAB is a setup where by strapping three of these together to a new Mac Pro, you can go up to three gigabytes per second in terms of transfer rate. So that means you can uh, uh, handle several uh, raw 4K uh, video streams in parallel. So uh, for us, it's like the ultimate in in uh, in, uh, in storage. Uh, it's the the fastest solution we can we can provide to our customers. And on top of that, thanks to Thunderbolt daisy chaining uh, uh, feature, it's scalable from anything from 30 terabytes up to more than 1.7 petabytes behind one single uh, uh, Mac Pro. So that's the whole idea behind us showing this to, to this industry. Erwan, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. There you have it. If you want super fast or super big, think let's see. If you've been shooting any content the last five or so years, you know about GoPro. It's the indestructible little camera that goes just about everywhere. Well, we're here at the GoPro booth and I'm standing next to Joe, who's gonna tell us what GoPro has in store for those next generation content developers. Joe, what is this? All right, so what we've released here at NAB is the Dual Hero system. It allows you to shoot in 3D, and it also allows you to shoot video and simultaneously shoot still stills on a second camera. So that's the 3D enclosure. We also re released a bunch of new mounts. So this is the Frame 2.0. It's uh, a much quicker and easier. Basically, we improved the Frame 1.0 based on all the user feedback and made it a lot easier. Quick release, full access to your side ports. Uh, this is the clip mount. That's also fairly new. And then we also have the clamp mount with the gooseneck. And in addition to that, we did come out with new one new music package in addition to or different than our regular Hero 3 Plus package, package which comes with a different, more audio-optimized set of mounts uh, and um, clamps and things along those lines, like a mic stand clamp. Uh, Joe, one of the things that has absolutely blown people away is what people have done with their GoPros. You've got Corridor Digital, who are, you know, they, they imitated Superman. You've got other people who are strapping GoPros to their back as they jump out of planes. What does that do for the development of your line? I mean, what can we expect to see? Is it just going to be more GoPros in a smaller uh, uh, size format? Or are you going to be going true 4K? What do you see next for GoPro? Uh, well, I'd love to be able to tell you everything. Um, Unfortunately, lips are sealed, but I can tell you that it's going to be awesome. What, what we've done right now, you guys haven't seen anything yet. So we're taking it to the next level, and it's going to be amazing. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to go into specifics, but, um, you know, everything that the users have done is, is directly why GoPro is what it is. So we always love everything that the users are doing, and we're going to be really heavily user-focused in the future. There you have it, he could tell us, but then he'd have to kill us. Joe, thank you very much. If you want to find out more, definitely drop by the GoPro booth or drop onto their website at gopro.com. Thunderbolt is great. There's no denying that it is the fastest bus currently available on the market for our devices. But the question is, what do you do once you have that Thunderbolt hard drive or that Thunderbolt camera? Well. You could just plug it into one device, one computer, one recorder, or you can head over to Addo and check out their Desklink line of products. I'm here with Wayne, who's going to explain to us exactly what the Thunderlink does. Wayne, what is this? So the Thunderlink device is a bridging product which takes uh, Thunderbolt in and then outputs it through any number of protocols. So we currently have products that support fiber channel, SAS, 10 gigabit ethernet, both optical and copper, as well as uh, SAS RAID. So depending on what type of device you wanted to connect it to, there's a, there's a Thunderlink product that will enable you to do that. Uh, there are a lot of people who may be puzzled as to why they would want to do this, but you know, the, the, I think the simplest way to say it is it's Thunderbolt to anything, right? I can take a Thunderbolt camera, I can take a Thunderbolt hard drive, and as I'm running it, I can then share it out through, what's the four different connectivity methods? 10 gigabit ethernet, SAS, fiber, uh, fiber, fiber channel, and SAS RAID, right? So you really increase the options, what you can actually do with any given device. Correct, and one of the challenges is, 
So, you know, the, the computer market is going to these smaller platform devices now. So when you look at mobile devices like the MacBook Pro, when you look at uh, things like the uh, HP Z Workbook, right? These are very powerful computers, but they're designed with no card cage in them. So how do I interface back into my infrastructure, especially if I'm trying to take this device back into a studio or back into the office? So what we developed the Thunderlink line of products, they allow these types of devices like the new Mac Pro, for example, to now connect into a fiber channel SAN or a high performance 10 gigabit ethernet uh, infrastructure at speeds that you could never do before. So these devices, they couldn't even connect into those infrastructures. They were isolated before. With Thunderlink, I can now bring them into the rest of my corporate infrastructure. So basically, anything you want to connect your Thunderbolt devices to, you can with this. So, hey, big question, pricing and availability. So availability is now. The pricing ranges from $895 for the basic SaaS connectivity product up to um, our Thunderbolt 2 to 16 gigabit, which is the high performance multi-channel thing for 4K production. Uh, that sells for $19.95. And if they want to go to find out more about your product, about your product line, or about the Thunderlink itself, where do they go? They go to www.adotech.com. Wayne, thank you very much for talking to us, and stay connected. If you've been watching Twit TV for a while, you know that we live and die by Skype. It's been our choice of connecting to our remote guests and our remote hosts because it is so pervasive, because it is so easy. And yet, even though we've used it for the last seven or so years, we know that it's not always difficult to get those feeds, those streams into your broadcast devices because that's not what Skype was made for until now. I'm standing with Simon who's gonna tell me all about Skype TX. Simon, what is Skype TX? Skype TX is a custom made uh, Skype client for the broadcaster. It's uh, there to deliver the broadcast quality uh, Skype experience that broadcasters need. Outputs HDSDI natively, balanced audio, connects directly into a broadcaster's infrastructure. You can control multiple clients from one place, so it's easy to produce with. It solves all the, um, the broadcasting problems that you currently have with a regular desktop client. Now, at our studio, what we had to do is we created four custom Skype boxes with SDI cards so we could get SDI out and in along with audio balanced in and out. It works, but it's kind of like Frankenstein's monster. It's not the best thing ever. What I like about this, this is a customized hardware and software solution, which means plug it and, and play. But it's not just that. One of the issues that we all have with Skype is sometimes network conditions drop out and you start getting the pixelated video. You actually have a solution for that. Tell me about it. So what we do is a, when the resolution drops to a, a, a level which the user is not happy with, we will automatically drop in a still image of the caller, which can be grabbed earlier in the call, or it could be a logo of, the, of your show or what have you. So you will never have an extremely pixelated image. You know, you'll go from, if the bandwidth drops, you'll go from a high quality, go to your still image, the call will carry on, the audio will carry on, and then when the video, when the bandwidth picks up, it will switch back to the live video call. Now, using Skype is not a big decision for people in my line of work because we know that's what you use. I mean, it's low latency, it's fast, it's normally very high quality. But for people in traditional broadcast media, this is sort of a game changer, right? Talk to me about latency. So, latency, you don't have it with Skype. You know, it's extremely low latency. The, the problems that we're hearing of broadcasters, you use satellite uplinks, you can have four or five seconds delay sometime. You can't have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with a, a caller coming in. Use Skype TX. You can have that, that natural flow of conversation. It's just not there, the latency. All right, now, here's the big question. I know it's not publicly available yet. I know that this is stored as still a, a Skunk Works version of Skype, but when will people start to see this become available, and when will people start to actually play with it? So it's currently being released as an, under a beta program where we're having clients that we're who are registering with us at Skype, um, skypeinmedia.com. Register your interest, um, you join our beta program. If you're selected, we'll send out the hardware. Um, and that beta program is expected to run for six to nine months, by which time there will be a commercial release for everyone to have. Simon, I think you've just given all broadcasters some hope. Thank you so very much for talking to us about the next generation 
of Skype. The very last piece of any good studio is some sort of storage backend. You see, you need something that's going to work with your workflow. Something that allows you to take a file, a video that you just shot, and share it out among different workstations so that you can have your different editors do what they need to do. It's just not going to work if you're shuttling a hard drive back and forth. That's why we're here at JMR, and I'm standing next to Miguel, who's going to tell us how their storage arrays, well, cut out the middleman. Miguel, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you very much for having me. So uh, let me start off by giving you a little background on JMR Electronics. We're a uh, made in the USA company. We've been in business for about 30 years here. We manufacture as much of our product as we can in the US. It's all ISO 9001, so we have very strict quality controls. So um, what I wanted to talk to you folks about was our network attached storage server. So what we're able to do with our network attached storage server, I'll show you here in the rack, is a uh, 16 bay 3RU storage server that has SAS or SATA connections to the drives. It also has a full server on the back end with up to 512 gigabytes of DDR RAM, dual Xeon processors, and we can do a combination of either single, uh, up to four port gigabit cards, you know, multiple cards in the machine, and also dual and quad port 10 gigabit cards on the machine as well. And since we're able to do PCI expansion, we can deploy in any given system about 20 10 gig ethernet ports on these machines so in essence you don't necessarily even need to purchase a switch with this. Miguel, one of the things I love is that since this is a custom box, since it's a custom metal, it's a custom chassis, it's, it's custom electronics inside, as you said, you could give people exactly what they want. If they want the 10 gig ports on the back, you can do a row of them. And, like you said, if you wanted to share files, you can share them with everyone, everywhere, with every single device. This is something that I don't see on EMC products, which cost, well, let's be honest, a whole lot of money. What is the thing that JMR does? What's the secret sauce that lets you do multiple workflows on a single file? Well, it's a combination of uh, combining the right hardware and the right software. We've actually been very fortunate to, to uh, come across at Euronas. They are our software provider for the NAS software that runs on this, and JMR's hardware is all our hardware. So we manufacture from the PC board level up. So we're manufacturing the backplanes, we're writing the firmware for them, and since we've been doing this for a long time, we're able to keep our costs down and provide people enterprise quality, reliability, and enterprise class features at a mid-market price. So, you know, that that's really what JMR is about, enterprise class quality, SMB price, and we, we really hang our hat on our support. As a part of our standard package, whenever you purchase a JMR product, you get three years advanced replacement warranty. So if a drive fails, we'll overnight you a drive. We do free email support, free phone support, free remote login support at no additional cost. Our, our way of thinking is that if you're making money off your service contracts, then you're building a product that's you know designed to fail, and we don't do that at JMR. Miguel, thank you so very much for talking to us. Thank you very much. And this is JMR, your next workflow. Everybody loves a dazzling 3D animation, but not all 3D animation packages are created equal. I'm standing next to Paul here at Maxon, who's going to tell us why their package should be the one that you learn. Paul, thank you very much for talking to us. Oh, well, thank you for talking to me. Now, you are demoing one of your suites here at the booth. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, Cinema 4D is a full-featured 3D animation package, modeling, texturing, animation, lighting package. It's used for motion graphics, visual effects, uh, scientific and medical animation, uh, visualization for architecture and engineering, pretty much anything a graphic artist is going to want to do. Okay, now this is great, and I understand that your package is actually pretty easy to learn, but let me be a little cynical for a second. This hall is filled with dozens of companies that think that they are the 3D package that you should buy, that they are the 3D package to learn, that they are the tool that everyone should have. What makes your package the one that they actually need to learn? Well, first thing, we, we always consider ourselves another paintbrush in the tool set. There are going to be cases where you may be using multiple 3D packages when you're doing a production. However, we are the easiest of the 3D packages to pick up and learn. That being said, 3D is complex. 3D is a hard thing to learn. It, you know, it's, it's the progression of Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects, 2D animation into 3D animation. And it's not for everybody. But we are one of the easier packages to pick up and learn. One of the other reasons you would want to pick us up is integration. Uh, we integrate better than anybody else with the 
Adobe suite of tools, including there's a light version of Cinema included with After Effects. We utilize Photoshop files. We render out multi-layered Photoshop files. You can use Illustrator files, drag and drop those into Cinema to use those profiles to create 3D models. And we do this with other app, uh, companies as well. Uh, at the show here, we're showing for the first time integration with VizRT. And so an artist can create a, a virtual set in Cinema 4D, and it can be live on their with their live graphics package. So if you go over there, you can see that move set pieces around and live it thus moving around. So it's completely integrated in their system as well. So the idea is to make it as easy as possible for artists to access the tools that they need to use to create great imagery and just make sure that Cinema 4D is part of that process. Okay, now let's go off script for just a second. Okay. I, I like the tool, I'm gonna play with it, but if there was someone out there, an amateur content creator, who wanted to get into the 3D game, what would be your advice? What would be the things he or she should do to get started? Okay, well, you've got to start with the basics, 2D, have, you know, like I said, Illustrator, Photoshop, understand the 2D design world before you put things into motion. I think the next step is something like After Effects where you can create 2D animation and then you get into the 3D part of it. That's why we include it with After Effects because it's, it, it gives people to, a chance to get a taste of what 3D can do for them. Pick up the product and give yourself a project. Go to, there's so many tutorials. There are so many resources online. There are so many great places to find uh, help with people. The, the community is amazing. They'll give you feedback. They'll give you suggestions. They'll offer help. And that's really, it's just about exploring the world of 3D. Paul, thank you very much. The man, the method, the Maxon. We've seen a lot of things here at NAB 2014 Las Vegas. We've seen monitors that sit on top of cameras. We've seen high definition pieces of perfection. We've seen every sort of tripod and stabilization platform that you can find, but there's still one thing that we're missing. That's you, the next generation of content creators who are gonna take all the gear that we've seen at this show and turn it into the next piece of imagination. Until that time, I'm Father Robert Balasser and this has been NAB 2014 Las Vegas. We got a quickie here for you. If you've got a Mac Pro and you've been wondering how you're going to rack mount it, well here at JMR, they figured it out. Head on over and pick up your brand new Mac Pro holster.